Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and this is going to be one of those Brock Talk kind of episodes where I'm just going to sit here and give you my thoughts on a topic that I think is important. Now, in this case, we're going to be talking about a subject that I've actually covered three or four times already, and that is relating to payload capacity and towing capacity. And I think it's a critically important topic because I've seen what happens if you improperly load a vehicle and how dangerous that can be. I'm also sponsored by a company called Waysafe that makes towing products to make towing safer by telling you the exact amount of pin weight you have when hooking to a trailer. And even though some people disagree with me on this subject, it's a statement of fact that the pin weight or the tongue weight of your trailer is part of your payload because it's being carried by the truck axles. So that's point number one. Now, as I said, I've already talked about this, so why am I talking about it again? Well, the answer is a sign at Home Depot. So I'm walking up to Home Depot and I see this sign that has, it's a chart of payload capacity. And if I'm tech savvy enough to figure out how, I'm gonna put that on like a split screen up here somewhere so you can see what I'm talking about. And I looked at that and I said, that is ridiculous. That, shot, that chart should not be up there. It's inaccurate and it doesn't make sense. And I pulled my phone out in the moment and I recorded like a 20 second clip just saying like, guys, don't follow this chart. It doesn't make sense. And I actually meant one thing and said something else when I pointed to a line on the chart and that got it started. But every time I post a video that has anything to do with vehicle capacities, the comments are just incredibly all over the place and inaccurate. And I'm going to address the inaccuracy of this chart, explain why I have a serious problem with this chart being posted the way it is, and also just start off by saying, the guys that say payload doesn't matter, I have a problem with what you're saying. I don't have a problem with what you're doing as long as you don't hurt anyone. I like to not try to tell people what to do. You can do whatever you want. But you do share the road with other people, so you've got to think about their safety as well. So I posted this short video, and a lot of the comments said there were like four categories I'm going to address here. The first thing is, oh, payload doesn't matter. I load it up till the axles, till it squats, you know, on the axles. And I've hauled, in my 1992, whatever it is, I've hauled five million pounds and just like my dad can beat up your dad kind of comments that you get internet tough guy stuff. Okay, that's fine. Most vehicles will haul more than they're rated for. But what I can tell you is that if I'm, say a scenario I do a lot isn't putting something directly in the bed, it's a heavy trailer with a lot of tongue weight. If I've got my truck, my gooseneck trailer, and my skid loader or skid steer, and I'm pulling that and I get into an accident. Say someone pulls out in front of me, it's a deer, something breaks on the trailer and I lose control, a blowout, any number of things happen that maybe aren't even my fault. Do you think there's a chance that the police report and the insurance are going to have an interest in whether or not my vehicle was overloaded, whether or not I was over the ratings? And the last thing I want is to be ruled at fault in an accident with a $150,000 rig behind me. And not to mention, you know, who else could be hurt in that accident. So that's why I care about payload. Also, my vehicle's under warranty, and you're just gonna tear something up, whether it's now or later. Now, let's talk about the chart. So I'm gonna pull it up on my phone here so that I'm looking at it while we're talking. So the... the the side of this chart that starts with small car, I have less of a problem with that. Because in general, I could look at this chart and say, Home Depot is looking out for our best interest. What they're really saying with this chart is, if you have a small car, don't put much weight in it. It's not meant to haul anything. You got people out there putting 1,000 pounds of bags of concrete or sandbags. They want to put in a sandbox. They put 1,000 pounds of sand in their car with four people. Well, it's not safe, it's not smart. Home Depot is giving you a generalized guideline that says, hey, don't do that. I have no problem with that side of the chart there, or the idea that the entire chart is meant to be helpful. But as we go across it, I'm gonna tell you where I have a problem. 
So you start at the top. That top line is classes of vehicle. A small car, large car, small truck, SUV, minivan. Those are classes of vehicle. Nowhere at the top does it tell you what the payload of those vehicles are. What you do is you take your class of vehicle and subtract 200 pounds per occupant from the payload. And that is how it works. Now here's where the problem comes in. We'll start with one category says small truck. Well, a small truck is a Toyota Tacoma, a Ford Ranger, any, anything smaller than a half ton. I call it a pickup. Now this says 1,200 pounds. Well, a Toyota Tacoma, if you look online, can have between 1,000 pounds of payload and 1,600 pounds of payload. Those two numbers are drastically different. I think it's like 1650. So the minimum number is so much different than the maximum number that it's not within the margin of error. The max is almost double the minimum. And in some cases, in the vehicles we're going to talk about, it is double. It's more than double. So you can't put a static number on something that has that much variance. Now, you say, look, we just, we're trying to help. We're given a ballpark idea that, just to help. Well, here's my problem. Maybe if you're even going to do that, go on the small end. But the reason you don't need to do that is your truck will have a label on the door of the truck that shows you your payload. You can just look right there. It'll tell you. And so to me, a better chart for Home Depot to, would, to put up would say, overloading a vehicle can lead to accidents. Please check your vehicle's payload rating before loading. And they say, well, how do I do that? It's right on the door. If you can't find it on the door, you know, you can check your owner's manual. You can go online. My truck, there's a website. You put in the van, it tells you your payload rating. It's important information to have. But that's, we, we started with small trucks. Now, my entire conversation about this was the last column that says 1.5 ton truck. And there are two possible interpretations. And this is where all the fighting and arguing and anger and name calling comes into my comment section on my short form video. The top of that column, it says 1.5 ton truck. And I said, hey, this tells you what you can put on a half ton truck. Don't listen to it. I said half ton when it says one and a half. I made a mistake there. Doesn't change anything about the conversation we're having. So there are two possible ways you can look at that chart. Either the top line is classes of vehicle, like the entire rest of the chart. It's classes of vehicle. If 1.5 ton truck is a class of vehicle, then what is a 1.5 ton truck? I've never heard that nomenclature. Commonly accepted terminology still used by auto manufacturers is starts with a half ton truck. Now, originally that half ton truck was based on a specific capa carrying capacity of the truck. That's no longer the case at all, but it's still an accepted nomenclature. Even though horsepower is not the most accurate thing anymore, we still use it because it's accepted, it's grandfathered. So we start with a half ton truck. That's the most important model of truck to put on a chart like this because it's what most of your customers have. Half ton trucks and F50, Ram 1500 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Toyota Tundra. Three quarter ton truck is an F-250, Ram 2500. One ton truck is an F-350, Ram 3500. So to get to a one and a half ton truck, you're talking about an F-550 that nobody who comes to Home Depot has. So if we look at the chart as the top line being classed as a vehicle, it's ridiculous to have 1.5 ton truck on the chart because no one has one. If you're going to put it on the chart, it's not 2,800 pounds of payload. You can get that in a half ton. It's going to be at least twice that. So if they're doing classes of vehicle, then that's either supposed to say half ton truck or it's supposed they're just making a chart that goes straight from minivan to F550, which is ridiculous. Now, if they meant for that to say half ton truck, then there's a problem with putting 2,800 pounds payload. Because an F-150 can have a payload ranging between 1,400 pounds and 3,300 pounds. Think about that range. And that depends on how you equip your truck. So if you equip your F-150 with every option you can put on it, and it has a 1,400-pound payload, you walk into Home Depot, 
You say, well, I don't know anything about trucks, but uh, this sign says I can put 2,800 pounds in my truck. It's a full double what you can actually put in your truck. So that's one scenario, that the top is classes of trucks. We've talked about what if they mean half ton? What if they mean one and a half ton? Both scenarios, that column is ridiculous. Now, what if, here's the counter argument that people are making. What people are saying, that chart's not talking about a half ton truck as a class of truck. What it's saying is a 1.5 ton capacity truck. So we have class of vehicle, class of vehicle, class of vehicle, class of vehicle, payload in tons. So they're suggesting that that's what the chart is. Okay, so if the chart is payload in tons, how would you know that you have a 1.5 ton truck? Well, you would go over and open your door and you would read the sticker and the sticker would say 3,000 pound payload. And then you do some math and you say 3,000 pounds, that's 1.5 tons. And then you go over the chart, 1.5 tons means 3,000 pounds minus 200 for the passenger. So the suggestion that the hundreds of viewers are making is that Home Depot wants you to go look at your door sticker Find out your payload, convert it to tons, use their chart to convert the tons back into pounds to get the number that you started with on the sticker. I don't think Home Depot did that, and if they did, it's just as bad as any of the other scenarios. So what's the takeaway here? Number one, you can't have a chart that lists a type of vehicle and the payload of that vehicle unless it represents a range. Any other way doesn't make sense. Second point I want to make. It's unclear because thousands of people are currently arguing about it on the comment section of my short form video and nobody has a clue what it means. I'm pretty confident that I know, but everyone on that comment section that's ranting and raving and calling me an idiot also thinks they know. Not only do those people not agree with me, they don't agree with each other. So we, what we have here, fellas, is a failure to communicate. So if I was Home Depot, I'd take that sign down. I'd put up a sign that has the information that they've already put above the sign, which is like secure your load, basic, like they have an acronym for safe loading. Then under it, it would say, before loading your vehicle, check your vehicle's payload capacity and subtract 200 pounds per occupant. That would be the most information in the most accurate and clear way they could give it. But this chart doesn't work. And bottom line is, I kind of think it's funny. I was just laughing my tail off and sending it to people like, look how goofball this is. What is they talking about here? And I posted it because I thought it was funny. But people got so mad, it didn't feel very funny anymore. It actually feels a little bit unsafe. So I apologize to Home Depot. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be negative here. Home Depot is what they're doing by making a chart like this. Someone in a meeting said, why don't we post something? that helps the customer be safer. And they made a good effort at it and they botched the last column for sure and maybe a couple other things. So, sorry to whoever made that chart. I apologize for wasting your time watching this video. I appreciate you taking time to watch. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and I'll see you next time.